Another big crowd here tonight at the stadium. Welcome to the Carlin Lynch Activity Center. We're ready to go here from the stadium. That will go. Coach Lassie getting her team fired up. What a game. Nothing fancy, just end the game. Not returned, and the point goes to the Indians. It deflected in! Oh, what a save. The Indians get the point. What a slight hit. Goal! Did she score? Yes, she does! They may not catch him. This puts the Indians on the board. The Indians will win it. The crowd is going crazy. Good evening and welcome everybody inside the Carlin Lynch Activity Center here at Dartmouth High School. Girls Volleyball on tap, a conference match today between the visiting Bridgewater Rainham Trojans and your Dartmouth Indians. Evan Massoud with you courtside for the call tonight. Great to be back with you here on DCTV. JV actually was a rather quick match. Um, Dartmouth taking that one 2-0. So sweeping the JV match. And as we get ready to get varsity going here on the Steve Gaspar court. Just finished introductions. Teams are ready to rock and roll. Bridgewater Raynham on the right side wearing their white road jerseys with red shorts. Dartmouth in their white home jerseys with green shorts. The liberos wearing the respective colors as well. The Indians at six and three coming into play. They've lost three of their last four games, but those are games in which they played up in their schedule. Um, something that we've seen, you know, over the years here with Coach Rachel Lassie as the leader of the squad. Her thirteen years plus here, so um, she's been around. She she knows the area. She knows the game. She knows the opponents, and she knows which teams can give her girls a run for their money, you know, in terms of playing up. And when it comes down to the wire, trying to get a playoff berth and have success in the tournament, playing up is definitely going to give you an advantage. Um, I, I said it, we were talking in the truck. I actually said it to coach as well. I said the lower division schools in this area are the ones who benefit more than the higher division schools because there's not a ton of D1 schools down here on the South Coast. So all these lower division schools, two and three, for example, they play up and they're benefiting from that tenfold when it comes to, you know, the tournament time. So, you know, transversely, you have D1 schools like Durfee and New Bedford that are playing South Coast Conference teams like Somerset, Old Rochester, DR, Case, Poniquet, and when they get to the playoffs and they're not at the level they need to be at. So it's okay to have some regular season losses when those losses are coming against some of the premier programs here on the South Coast, we're talking Oliver Ames, we're talking Barnstable, um, you know, to name a couple. And those were two of the opponents that Dartmouth lost to in this last week. So to me, those losses, I'm okay with that any day. Coach Lassie's okay with that any day because in the end, they're going to benefit from those losses more than a win would benefit them down the road against a lower team. Bridgewater Raynham coming in at four and six. Uh, Coach Maria Serrano leading the squad. And, uh, you know, in talking to her before the game, she says, you know, we have very good players. We have good height. She said, uh, you know, ultimately just trying to put that perfect match together. It hasn't really come together just yet. Um, lots of juniors. She's got a big roster. Um, and looking up and down here, let's see, six, uh, six seniors here for her in 2023. So um, a lot of players that will be returners though next year. Tons of juniors on her roster. Um, so, you know, for her, trying to get it to click. Nearing, the, We're at the halfway mark for them. This is game 11. And uh, so down the stretch here, they need some wins. This being a conference game, um, you know, is an important one. Conference wins... You know, winning the actual conference doesn't get you a berth in the tournament anymore. Um, but, you know, taking the conference is still an honor in terms of getting a banner for your school and whatnot. So a little extra to play for in this one in terms of knowing that your opponent is one of the better programs in the area. 
And a uh, kind of a muffed set there. The double touch will even the score 3-3. Three, three. As we see one of the captains for the Trojans, Caitlin Buron, serving once again. That's a good serve. This is going to be tough to return, and it will not be returned as BR has their first lead of the match. Good play on the back line there for the Indians. Coming in, trickling it over the net. Brooke Davis, one of Dartmouth's captains, two captains for the Indians, her and Gabby Velasquez. For the Trojans, they have three. Buron, who you just saw, uh, Jillian Russell, and Katie Corcoran, who is unfortunately out uh, with an injury right now for concussion protocol. So uh, Coach Serrano said they're going to be without her. That last point for the Trojans. Flipped over by the setter, trying to catch them off guard. That was Russell, and uh, it worked. The Indians were not ready for it. So BR back on the serve, and it is Julia Santos, number two. Good strong serve, goes to the far side. That is deflected, and down to the court it goes. Velasquez lets it fly. That's a great serve. The ace for Dartmouth. Um, virtually no spin on that ball, and it just fell right off the table. And you see it here. I always feel like those are probably the hardest balls to return, although when you have that kind of power, <laughs> that's not easy either. But when you don't have the spin on it, I've said it before, it's like a knuckleball in baseball. And it just, the ball dances on the serve, and it's really tough to read. So those are very difficult. Look at that one. Now, see, that one, that one lands just inbounds, but it had a little more distance on it. It didn't fall like the one two serves ago. So that's what I mean. But every time's a little different. That one just kind of floated, and it landed right on the line. Um, so it kind of, it changes, it varies, and that's that's the challenge when you're the received team here as the Trojans call the timeout. Down just three here, an early timeout for Coach Serrano. Velasquez will continue to serve here. Four straight points for Dartmouth, trying to make it five. That one a short serve, diving to the court. That was uh, Samantha Hayward wearing the libero. It's a good attempt on the dig, just not able to Get it back, that hits off the lights and that is in play. Big swing that time from Berman, but it goes long. That's coming right back as Berman kind of batted it away. That's going to sail. No deflection that time. And that'll snap a 6-0 run for the Indians. Trojans will take over now and serve. And it's Berman who will be behind the back line. 
Slow over the net. Good dig by Velasquez. And the Indians are going to get it right back. Got the serve. One, two, three. Dig, set, finish. Elena Strozik. Big hit off the front line. Dug out, sent back by the Trojans. Indians will get another shot here. Not too strong as that was just kind of poked over the net. Still in play! And it will go out. Good attempt. Trojans maintain here. Well, they'll get it back, I should say. And it is Hayward on the serve. Jenkins a little, little late on that swing and buries it into the net. Loader. That one also into the net. So a couple misfires here. Had some really good serves from uh, Velazquez that you know got the Indians ahead here with a little bit, little bit of breathing room. The hitters with a few errant swings. See if they can make up for it here. Another one. Jenkins can't get it over. Aiming for that 10-foot line and not getting lucky with it. A little late once again. Jenkins, third time's a charm. Out of bounds, and Dartmouth with the point. It went right back to Jenkins. And even then, a little late on the swing, but this time she was close enough to the net and she was able to just bury it between the defender there. That was Buron and the net on the other side of it. So good point there. Good to go right back to her. Keep the confidence up. Strozik with the set. This is going to be a tough play here. Third touch coming, and it'll be dumped over by Clary. Nice move there. Kyla Martin sending that one like almost parallel to the net. Up into the rafters, coming back. Third touch for Dartmouth. BR will get the free ball. Nice dig from Velasquez. Set from Santos. That is out, just out. Clary, maybe two or three inches too long. Olivia Aruda. On the serve now for Dartmouth. Jenkins, big hit. And Dartmouth's lead back up by five here. 15 to 10. Not a good set there. Um, well, I should say that. Good set from Santos, but out of uh, position there was Buron. She was a little too close to the net for BR. They ended up still getting the point, but kind of had to lean back into that swing, and that's not what you want to do. But they got lucky with it anyway, coming away with the point. Jillian Russell back to serve now. Low serve. Dug out, and that's not coming back. That's going to sail. Out of bounds. Sixteen twelve. Jenkins 
to serve now for the first time in the match. That one skips over the net. Low serve, but a lot of power behind it. Big time swing there from Buron. She gets the kill. About a 45 degree angle to the ground. That's so hard to defend. Clary gives it a whirl. And a little communication breakdown that time for the Indians. That one will fall right down to the court. Coach Lassie directing traffic. That's into the net. Here at 17-14, if I'm not mistaken, that's the first bad serve for either side, at least that didn't get over, we'll say. That's the first one the net caught. A couple that went long, but service game has been pretty good for both sides here in game one. That's off the front line. Back to Strozek. That's going to come back. Big dig from Hayward. A lot of power. Now that's coming back off the front of the net, and it's trouble for BR. I like the idea there from Buron. Just not able to get it over. Martin with the serve again. And that one not returnable. Another five point lead for the Indians. I think it's six. Going after Hayward here is all of a sudden having some trouble Returning the ball here, not liking the look that Martin's given her, and they keep going to her. I don't think people realize, you know, how strategic the service game really is. Three times, and she can't return it. You want to work all sides of the court, right? Power, back left, middle, back right. Maybe some shorter serves. Force them to dive in the back line. Dive and dig it out. And when you find a weak spot, you keep going at it. Good dig that time from Hayward. It's a tough angle as uh, coming in there was Berman, was able to get it over, and now a chance for the Indians. That's going to be a tough play, and BR stops the bleeding. They'll get the ball back. But a couple tough serves there for the Trojans to handle, giving Dartmouth an extended lead here late in the first. That's not coming back. 22-15. Brooke Davis will serve. Third touch. Hayward has to send it over. And that'll go into the net. Julia Santos serving for BR. Strozik with the set for Ablett. Now the Trojans with a swing. And a violation against the Trojans gives Dartmouth the ball and the point. And Velazquez had a nice run earlier in the set. Might have been going long, but Haywood plays it. Trojans get the point. A violation for the Indians. Jenkins! And it's set point. And that's the first. Dartmouth takes it. 25-17 here in game one. 
rather convincing. BR hung around for a little bit, beginning of it, but Dartmouth able to break it open, you know, with some bursts of points. So they have a one nothing lead here in this best of five varsity match. 25-17, the point totals in this first. Two and a half minutes until the second. We'll take a quick break and be back with you live from Dartmouth High School. The competition, the sacrifice, and team unity are the cornerstones of life for each and every one of us here. Never in my wildest dreams, and when you're on chemo, you do have wild dreams, did I ever think I would be inducted into this Hall of Fame. My Dartmouth High School athletic days are some of my fondest memories. I wish all of you in one day of your life could feel what this feels like. To do something you love for years, and to be honored like this. A Hall of Fame is something that it is a great accolade. It's something that, you know, we've all walked into that, that front, front area at Dartmouth High School and seen them pictures on the wall. It's such an honor to be able to have my face on there. Dartmouth Pride is more of, you know, wearing green, wearing Dartmouth across your chest, being part of a team, being part of a family, uh, and basically just the spirit of it, you know, having the Dartmouth Pride to get you through those four years. So much more than just these stats and these wins and these titles, it's, it's this, this passion, this contagious feeling of Dartmouth athletics. And it's a legacy, it has so much heritage and it's, it's passed on year after year because of people who are here tonight, because of the coaches and all that they do. Your team of state champions, the Dartmouth High School champions of Division Three. Wow. Oh, this team has been wonderful. Touchdown, Jordan Tidman from 60 yards up. You're going to get knocked down, you're going to get hit, you're going to have a little pain, a little uh, aggravation, and you got to understand that uh, you've got to get back in the game. And I think that's life. We all get knocked down in life, and you got to get back and play the game of life and play it hard with a great deal of uh, enthusiasm. And I think that's where I, uh, I hope that they'd always do that. Welcome back, everybody, inside Dartmouth High School, the Carlin Lynch Activity Center on this Wednesday evening, Wednesday, October 4th. Ready for set number two. Dartmouth taking the first one by eight points. BR closed to within a couple uh, multiple times, and then Dartmouth able to you know, rattle off four points here, three points there, and continue padding their lead and ultimately taking the first one. And so now, as we switch sides, Indians will start with the balls. They start the service game here, and that one goes into the net, and the Indians will get the first point here of the second. And Olivia Aruda will go back to serve once again. That one gets through the defensive line for the Indians off the fingertips and ends up on the court. And the Trojans will get to serve here for the first time in the second set. That was Clara, or Clary, excuse me. And that's going out of bounds. Jenkins for the Indians. Nice dig from Hayward. Yes. 
Clary on that back line off of a huge hit from Davis. That's going to go long, but what a great save on the back line for the Trojans to keep that one going right here. Davis, hello. And then Hayward sends it long. Serve on its way. Hayward couldn't return it, needed some help. Third touch, and it will go back to Dartmouth. That's coming towards the sin. Oh, and the scaffolding keeps it in play for the Trojans. You kidding me? That's crazy. So many times we see that where it hurts the team. <laughs> and that time it came back over the court. Another nice dig. Strozik with the set. Everybody being too funny with it here. They're not getting good clean sets and BR wins that. What a rally. Nobody wanted to take a big swing. Kept conceding to the other team, trying to catch them off guard, and didn't work. Buron will serve. That's trouble. 4-2 Dartmouth. Ace for the Indians, Hayward. Unable to return it. This is Martin on the serve. Poked right back down. Ablett with the defensive play in front of the net. Another tough play. Great effort from Nicole Kimball. Just not able to get to that in time to turn it around. Hayward. That kind of ate her up a little bit. That's going to go through the scaffolding and now comes back the other way. Keep going after Hayward, and I'll tell you, she, she's not able to return it. She's having some trouble here. And now I'm going to come out. Nine two, the score. That was probably going out. Had a lot of power behind it. But that one ate up Buron. Uh, the Indians on a run here, and that's going to spark a timeout. It's only a matter of time. Coach Serrano going to rally the troops. 11 2. Indians breaking the huddle here earlier than the buzzer. Eight straight points for Dartmouth. It was three to two. And in the blink of an eye here, the lead is now nine. We'll see if the timeout broke up uh, Martin's rhythm because she's been serving. Good serve, and even that one not coming back. Ten point lead for the Indians here in the second. Yeah. 
Third touch, Trojans have to dump it over. Strozik with the set. Big time hit from Davis. Buries it between the defenders. And that's gonna go long. Indians rattle off 10 straight before giving up the ball. Pretty impressive. Julia Santos will serve now. Try to get her Trojans back in this. Good dig in a tough spot. And Buron sends it into the net. Late hit. She knew it right away. And now the Indians with control back. Brooke Davis will serve. That was going long. And Buron decided to play it. Well, she'd like to have that one back. 15 to three. Short serve this time, and it just lands. We'll get a second possession here. Now Strozik with the set. Off the front line, nice dig. Sent back to the Indians. And Dartmouth with the point. Really good effort by Berman. She dug that out, had a couple swings. Only so much that she could do. It's a 16-point lead for the Indians. Punched at, sent back over. Strozik trying to set, gets a good set. And that one goes into the net. So 19-4. Out of bounds, and that is the 20th point for the Indians. And Velasquez will serve. Good, strong serve. Third touch already, and Dartmouth will get the ball back. Jenkins with a little added emphasis. No one's touching that. <laughs> Third touch now for Dartmouth. Both sides unable to set and finish here. Now a free ball for the Indians again. Strozik can set this time. Who wants it? That's off the front line, punched, coming back. It's trouble. No good. Crane. Get credited with that kill. Yeah. 
That's out. Sophia Benoit serving. Another big hit from the Dartmouth front line. Another kill there for Jenkins. Oh, nice dig from Velasquez. There was nobody getting to it. She was in a full dive. Another full dive. Third touch, Dartmouth has to dump it over. Santos with the set, poked over. And BR gets the point, Buron. That time, trying to make up for a couple of the misfires earlier. Jillian Russell. Ready to send it. Misplayed by the Indians. It's one of the worst uh, angles when the service coming in. Kind of right at the emblem. You don't know whether to, you know, kind of loft the ball and dig it out or try to almost set it with the palms and the fingertips. Tough play. And BR with three straight points now. Alpha Jenkins, Jenkins switches it up this time. Goes with finesse instead of power. And it is set point for the Indians. Just got it over the defender, Buron, who was already coming down from her leap and not going to be able to do anything with it. Into the net. What a dominating second set for the Indians. 25 to 9. That's a total blowout. And the Indians hold a 2-0 lead on this match. I'm going to switch sides one more time here. Once again, as we get ready for the third, we'll step aside as well and see you back here live in about two minutes. field.
touchdown. It's a touchdown for the Corsairs. A beautiful ball from Santos down the far sideline. Welcome back, everybody. We are here at Dartmouth High live. Volleyball action, Southeast Conference play. The Dartmouth Indians and the Bridgewater Rain M Trojans in battle today. And it has been all Dartmouth. Uh, you know, we'll go back to that first set, if you're just joining us. Kind of, kind of tight throughout the first, say, 10 points for both sides. And uh, then Dartmouth started you know, getting little bursts of offense, a few more little mistakes exploited, you know, on the Trojan side of things. And um, Dartmouth ended up taking the first set 25-17. But the second set, all Dartmouth. They had a 10-0 run at one point, 25-9 just moments ago. So Dartmouth up to zip here in the best of five match. The Trojans will start off here with the ball. Jillian Russell will serve. And just trying to avoid elimination here, or well, not elimination, really defeat, <laughs> is essentially what they're trying to avoid um, and trying to force a fourth set. The point goes to Dartmouth. Interesting uh, stat to, to note here, in Dartmouth's three losses, those losses were sweeps. And they were at the hands of Oliver Ames, Barnstable, and Westboro, okay? Westboro being their last game, which was right here on Monday. Barnstable and Oliver Ames were on the road last week. Uh, well, the 22nd and the 28th, Friday and Thursday. Every other game has been wins for Dartmouth. That's why six and three. And those wins have all been sweeps. So when Dartmouth wins the first set, they don't lose. Um, and they win convincingly. So take what you want from that. Uh, it's just numbers, but it's fun to look inside the numbers sometimes, and inside the stats a bit. And uh, so for Dartmouth, basically unbeatable if they win that first set. And as we have their calendar out, we'll, uh, let's talk a little more about their schedule. Uh, they're playing on Friday as well. Next week is also a three-match week. Uh, but Friday home, so all three matches this week were here. Uh, with Friday being the third, hosting Case. Then next week, three games on the road, Aponiquit, Brockton, and Dennis Yarmouth. And then they finish their schedule with four of six games at home. For BR... BR returns home on Friday. They'll play two at home, Friday and Monday. Uh, Monday being Columbus Day, be an early game at 11.30. But Friday, 5.30. Mount Hope and then Case, Friday and Monday. And then Wednesday on the road at New Bedford High. And Friday on the road at uh, Fontbonne Early College in Boston. And for Dartmouth, the Aponiquit game on Monday, if anybody's going to travel. Aponiquit, obviously, not far from here. Monday, again, being the holiday, uh, a 12 o'clock start at Aponiquit. So anybody who's planning to go to that game, know that it is at noon and not in the evening. Here on DCTV for sports coverage, we have uh, college football on Saturday as the Corsairs host Mass Maritime. Usually a really good game. I've actually called that matchup 
a couple years ago, and uh, it was the number one offense against the number one defense, and UMass was not favored, but UMass doesn't lose at Cressy Field, and they blew out Mass Maritime. It was, it was a major upset. Uh, that was that was a tremendous game. That was in the atmosphere too. That was, I think it was Alumni Weekend, or something. Um, and I mean, it was just packed. So to come out, you know, considered on paper the underdogs. I remember that game. That was a great game. I think that was two years ago, 2021. So that'll be on DCTV this Saturday. BR calling the timeout here as this third set getting away from them quickly like the second set did. It was 3-2, to two and Dartmouth went on a 10-0 run in that second set to make it 13-2 to two before BR got their next point here in the third. 8-2 to two the score, and the Indians continually, continuing to pile it on. Brooke Davis will keep serving. You know, this game was actually supposed to happen about a week and a half ago, but some schedule shuffling and whatnot, and uh, it had to be postponed. I was talking with Athletic Director and Andy Crisofoli for the game, and because uh, we actually had field hockey slated for today, and that changed to this matchup, which... Um, so we're bringing that one to you now, or this one to you now, and then next Wednesday, we'll have field hockey on DCTV a week from today. That's gonna go out, and it's a 10 to two lead for Dartmouth. Third touch, and Dartmouth gets the free ball here. Strausick with the set. Good hit. Better dig for Trojans. It just gets over the net, and that's into the net, and BR will get a point. Right down to the court. Nobody on this near this near corner. And Ablett found the space on the court. Velasquez. Ready to fire here. That's going to be short. Haven't seen that much tonight. Big hit, Jenkins, and it goes out. I thought that was deflected, but apparently not. And that's out of bounds on the sideline here. 11-5. Yeah. That one inbounds for Jenkins. A little less on it, but good placement. Nobody was there. And now Strozik will serve. Out of bounds. Yeah. Jenkins again. Been the go-to in front over these last few possessions. 
Good set from Strozik. And strong once again. Jenkins with a lot of power. That one into the net. So some rare misfires here for the Indians on their serves, which have been really good all game long. Waiting on a sub for the Trojans there as uh, Russell comes back in. She started the set on the serve, and now she'll serve again. A little after 6 o'clock here. Match moving along very quickly. We take a look at this point here. Jenkins again. That one slapped off the front line, and it ricochets out of bounds. Now Jenkins will serve. That's a good serve. Not coming back. Eats up Hayward. That's it. That went right by everybody and just landed on the court. It's a miscommunication from Hayward and Campbell, and they watched it go. Now Hayward plays it. That's coming back with a lot of force. Third touch. Big hit from Davis. The Trojans able to play it and now sent it over. Back to Dartmouth was uh, Clary on the swing. That's going to go long, and the Trojans will get the ball back at 16-8. Misplayed, and it costs BR a point. Russell not able to make a play on it cleanly. And Martin will serve. Strozik can set this one. And a big hit there from Ablett. Not a ton of power behind it, but the angle. Crossing the net and landing at that 10-foot line. Really good motion. That's going to go long for Martin. Third touch, Dartmouth has to dump it over on the serve from Buron. Ablett comes right back, pokes it back. Another big dig for the Trojans. They keep it alive. Buron can't return it, and it's into the screen. 19 to 9, a 10 point lead for Dartmouth, closing in on a sweep here in conference play. Davis back to serve again. That's going to be a tough play in front. That is just complete no man's land when that happens. Virtually impossible to get anything good out of it. Julia Santos will serve for BR. Good block in front. Ablett with the denial. Oh, what height will do for you up front. <laughs> Timeout for the Trojans. Dartmouth five points away from a sweep here. 
20 to 10, the score. Back to the court we go, Velasquez. Had a good night with her service game. See if she can finish it off here. Third touch, and the Trojans have to dump it over. Strozik will get to set. Jenkins wants it, gets it. Great dig on the back line. Clary kept it alive. Hayward needs some help, gets it. Great dig from Hayward. Goes back to Dartmouth. Jenkins with the set. Finishes it off. <laughs> saw some really good defense from the Trojans on that sequence there. The replay you saw was Jenkins' first hit. That was dug out there by Clary, pancaking it basically, flat hand on the ground to keep the play going. And Jenkins ultimately getting the kill. Now Berman on the serve. Going to the other side now to Crane, and that's no good. Another point for Jenkins. Jenkins stays with it, but it's going to fall. Tough in between hop there. Hayward on the serve, it's a good one. Setting for Jenkins, pokes it over. That was hit twice by the front line by uh, Buron. Good serve. Hayward digs it out, came right back. Strozik's the one who served it. Out of bounds, and it's match point. Strozik trying to finish it off here. Hayward lost it in the air. Third touch coming. Buron will send it over. Strozik to Jenkins. That's game! Jenkins! Nearly single-handedly finishing off these last 10 points. Ridiculous. Boom. Took out Hayward. <laughs> Jeez. 25-13. Here in the third, 
A dominating performance once again by the Indians who are back in the win column here in conference play. Improved to seven and three at the halfway mark here in 2023. And they hand BR their seventh loss of the season. 25-17 in the first, 25-9 in the second, and 25-13 here in the third, a three nothing sweep for the Lady Indians. Quick match tonight too, just basically an hour, 6.15, 6.17 right now. Fast, fast moving game, and that's what happens. So it's such a one-sided affair like it was tonight. Well, we thank you for tuning in, folks. Been fun here at the Carlin Lynch Activity Center. I hope you enjoy the rest of your work week. For our great crew behind the scenes, I'm Evan Massoud saying so long from Dartmouth High.